Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with Samar Ajawi. A report on the Kingdom of Bahrain was published as a special report by Newsweek magazine titled Bahrain, the U.S. Partner in the Gulf Cooperation Council, a priority for the U.S. private sector in the economically active kingdom. The article contained statements made by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, as well as a number of officials that shed light on the development progress in the kingdom in all economic sectors. The magazine stated that Bahrain is a modern country that enjoys openness and was able to face the increasing competition through the development of its industries and taking advantage of the dynamic market opportunities available. The magazine also highlighted the strong relations of friendship and partnership between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States of America, citing the statements made by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa when he met with US President Donald Trump in 2017, where the King affirmed these bilateral ties are based on strong foundations of common understanding. Newsweek noted the keenness of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to maintain the strong relations with the United States, as relations with the US are important not only to Bahrain but also to the region as a whole. The magazine started its article by stating that the Kingdom of Bahrain is historically known as a major trading center in the Middle East and was the first country in the Gulf region to have discovered oil in 1932. The article noted that the efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister contributed to the advancement and prosperity of the Kingdom, who exerted a series of efforts and sacrifices to reach the set goals. The magazine quoted His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in saying that the development is based on strategy of diversifying sources of income and building a globally competitive economy. The report affirmed that this approach had enabled Bahrain to achieve high growth rates and become a leader in many sectors, as this is particularly evident in the financial services sector, where the kingdom is home to 325 financial institutions as well as insurance sector institutions. It also noted that Bahrain's GDP grew by 3.9% in 2017 with a 5% growth in the non-oil sector, making Bahrain the fastest growing economy in the region. And according to the magazine, foreign investments also increased to $10 billion, of which 95% is directed in the financial services sector. In addition to work being made on projects worth $32 billion in the fields of industry, logistics, infrastructure, health services, education, and tourism. Newsweek suggested that what the Prime Minister had pointed out in regards to the discovery of huge marine oil reserves in 2018, estimated at 80 billion barrels of oil and 10 to 20 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, could contribute effectively to revitalizing the kingdom for years to come and boost the foreign investment. Newsweek went on to point out that Bahrain was the first country to sign a free trade agreement with the U.S. in 2016 that resulted in the United States becoming the second largest trading partner of the kingdom with a trade volume of $2 billion annually, with 11% of the Bahraini exports to the U.S. of their imports. The magazine also mentioned that the U.S. market now represents a special priority for Bahraini investments through its sovereign fund, as Bahraini investments in the U.S. market constitute 8.3% of its investment portfolio. The International Organization Against Violence and Addiction, DARE, honored the Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa with the Personality of the Year Award 2018 for the successes achieved in the Together or Ma'an program which met all the standards of the organization. The ministry worked on developing the program in accordance with the requirements of the local society's values and traditions in a manner that protects the adolescents and youth from violence and addiction. The award was accepted by the Ambassador of Bahrain to the United States, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, on behalf of the Interior Minister and was also attended by a delegation from the Kingdom of Bahrain representing the Ma'an team. The ambassador affirmed that the achievements made through the program are due to the directives of the Interior Minister and his unwavering support. The organization said that the Ministry of Interior had made advanced steps in the field of combating violence and addiction in comparison to all other accredited bodies. The President and CEO of DARE, Frank Piguros, lauded the role of the Interior Minister in activating the program and providing the right conditions to achieve successes. Pigueros noted the achievements made by the MAN program since its launch in the Kingdom of Bahrain in 2011 that was evident through the increase of the number of beneficiaries and the reduction of misconduct, as well as the adoption of indicators that measure the impact according to world standards.
and the Kingdom of Bahrain's ambassador to the United States was granted a position as a member of the board of directors of the DARE organization, thus becoming the first person outside of the U.S. to get the position since the organization's establishment in 1983. The president and CEO of DARE, Frank Pigueros, hailed the role the ambassador played in supporting the Man anti-violence and anti-addiction program that the Kingdom is conducting in partnership with the organizations, noting that the ambassador is regarded as the founder of the program as he ran it for six years, which had a significant impact on promoting awareness against violence and addiction. The 2018 Elections Executive Committee announced yesterday that an electoral silence will be observed today, 24 hours before voting in the runoff parliamentary and municipal elections. The committee called for all electoral campaigning to cease across Bahrain 24 hours before voting starts on Saturday, corresponding to the 1st of December 2018, in compliance with the law on the Shura Council and Council of Representatives. The ban on electoral campaigning includes social media, SMS, the opening of the electoral centers, or the presence of candidates in the polling stations. The electoral silence also bans campaigning or communicating with the voters, whether near the polling and ballot counting centers or any location deemed illegal. The 2018 Elections Executive Committee stressed the importance of committing to the laws governing the polling process and complying with the electoral silence. Bahraini men and women will head to the polls tomorrow to cast their votes to elect their favorite candidates in constituencies with no declared winner in the first round of parliamentary and municipal elections. Only nine parliament candidates secured victory at the first round, with the remaining 31 seats moving to a second round vote. Voters can cast their ballots from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in their 40 constituency polling stations or in any of the 14 general polling centers spread out over Bahrain from Muharraq in the north to the International Circuit in the South, in order to ease the procedure for those far from home. Voters' turnout in the first round was 67%. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Sheikh Khaled bin Ali Al Khalifa, said that the massive turnout was a clear indication of Bahrain's support for the process of democratization and showed their rejection of external forces who have deliberately sought to derail the electoral process. The Bahrain Game Jam 2018, a 48-hour game development competition, started at the Bahrain Polytechnic yesterday until the 1st of December 2018, organized by the Bahrain Internet Society in collaboration with the United Nations Industrial Development Program, UNIDO, Abdurrahim al Kohaji Foundation, Startup Bahrain for All, and Strategic Partnership with Tamkeen and the French Embassy, and powered by Tartib. More in this detail with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. The Bahrain Game Jam 2018 is a game development challenge where a group of developers can form groups to develop games over the span of 48 hours. The event is officially part of the French Digital November Initiative, organized by France through its embassies. Video game is an industry of, uh, let us not say future, but uh, it's strongly uh, enshrined and rooted into present. And uh, France has a, a particular know-how in this respect, uh, the f three uh, experts coming from video producers, video game producers coming from France, will, I hope, uh, show, uh, give a small showcase of this uh, French expertise. The event is part of a larger initiative by the Bahrain Internet Society that aims to create the game development sector in Bahrain. The gaming industry is estimated at USD 116 billion in 2017 with an expected growth of USD 134 billion by the end of 2018. This is why it's also supported by UNIDO. We have amazing human capital in Bahrain that is untapped until now in terms of the gaming industry. Uh, it's, it's a huge investment that we believe the country and the leaders of the country have invested long time ago in terms of developing people with the talent of uh, programming, coding, uh, as all our universities are having special divisions for that. What really inspired me that there are the number of ladies joining this program, which is, which is very interesting. Even this is 
not only monopolized by men, but there are a lot of, uh, of ladies from Bahrain that could be uh, or developing their businesses in the, in the sector of gaming. Such competition will help in creating jobs for technical, creative and business professionals in Bahrain for this industry. By identifying local and regional talents and creating external exposure on the region's efforts towards attracting large developers and publishers in the gaming industry to the region. You can learn something out of this. And that's way better than maybe after 20 years I'm going to be looking back and be like, hey, remember that one time at Game Jam? I didn't go there. I should have went there. All games created at the Bahrain Game Jam 2018 will have the opportunity to be displayed for the public to see and try. Additionally, the game will be placed online so remote participants can try it as well. Game jams is not just a trend, it's a billion dollar industry. Today starts a 48 hours competition, challenging our young game developers to squeeze their creative juices and create those games perfectly and in a very short period of time. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour.